My apologies for keeping you waiting. I understand there is a matter you wish to discuss. Aye. A matter of the utmost gravity. If one can suspend disbelief. Go on then. Tell him what you told us. Who you are and why you came. Final days. The phenomena observed during these star-encompassing calamities is likely the product of a dynamous reaction. And none is more versed in the applications of this energy than you, Hermes. I must stress, that we do not believe you would desire such destruction. We come not to lodge accusations, but to beg your wisdom. And so, distressing though the exercise may be, I ask that you share with us your opinion on the matter, on the assumption that our visitor's tale is true. Even you, Vanna. As you say, the phenomena observed in the two calamities may both be attributed to Dynamis. Of note is the difference in its effect. In the first final days, it warped creation magics. In the second, it warped the people themselves. The key variable, I suspect, is the etheric density of the men of each age. As you know, ether, in essence, negates dynamis. Harboring high concentrations of ether, we ancients cannot readily manipulate dynamis, nor be manipulated by it. Therefore, rather than ourselves, the calamity affected our magics. In contrast, having been sundered, the people of the future are composed of but a fraction of our ether. Thus are they susceptible to the influence of Dynamis and its transformative potential. But that would explain only the mechanism, not the cause. Though perhaps... What is it? Even should it be a hypothesis, we would hear it. Dynamis is an energy put in motion by feelings. Feelings for which there must first exist a source. A source to which the victims must be attuned. One that harbors the self-same negative emotions. Elsewise, it could not be the agent of such extreme change. So it wasn't the stagnation of the celestial currents. Someone or something, is instigating the star's demise. So, we've a villain on our hands after all. Any idea who or what it could be? The celestial currents comprise the outermost layer of the star's ether, encasing it like a protective sphere. According to your tale, it was where the currents were weakest that the phenomena first manifested. If the inciting factor came from without a theris, then its effects would first be seen in those locations. Greetings. Can you hear me? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, know your thoughts. May we please be friends. Meteor. What is it? 
executing scheduled tasks, suspending individual self and connecting to shared consciousness. Connection established. Commencing status report. Steady, Meteon. Steady. So scared. So lonely. The pain. It's too much. <laughs> why? Why? Uh, why do we... Uh, make... Hurt. Hurt. Hate. Hate. This is wrong. All wrong. She's... gone? But how? She has altered her etheric density in order to blend in with her surroundings, an ability for avoiding confrontation. Most effective. Frustratingly so. I can't see her either. Not even a trace. Stay away. Please. This is wrong. My mistake. So please. Are you all right? In your mind? No. We only heard her speak the instant before she vanished. Of course. When communicating without words, Meteon also employs Dynamis. That would explain why you were able to hear her when we could not. Then you are our best chance of finding her. Follow her voice and try to track her down. Hindered though we may be, let us split up and search as well.